Welcome back to MMA Soccer Fight fans. My name is Nate Freeman. I'm joined today by Angela Barr, who is competing in the 51 kilo division of the World Games 2022 coming up this week. Angela, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. How are you? I'm fantastic. I can't complain. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Um, you've been at this game for a long time, um, yes. and you finally got the opportunity to sort of prove yourself against the elite of the elite in this country, first and foremost, at the U.S. Team Trials. Um, the first time they've brought all um, people from around the country together to really prove who is the best of the best in the U.S. Um, give me your thoughts and reflections on that journey, on that tournament. Um, obviously, you won and you're representing Team USA, but what did you learn um, and what was your experience like there? You know, it was really nice to have that tournament just because we all go to tournaments trying, like hoping to fight each other, right? But it just depends on who can get to what tournament at what time of the year. And so it's always kind of a toss up, but to have everybody, um, you know, even the best girls in my bracket, like fighting for that spot at one tournament, it was so much fun. And these are girls I watch and cheer for when they're not fighting me, right? And so it was just really nice to um, to be there with everybody. The energy was great. Um, it was almost like a golf tournament when like, you know, when people are quiet during the round, um, which was really nice because everyone was there just, I mean, for the love of Muay Thai. So it was really great. Yeah, yeah, that um, that's what I've heard from a lot of people is that, yeah, it was just something that um, the they wish the Federation had done sooner, something yes. that um, it's just been a great way of not only just um, like proving um, who the best in the country is at certain weight classes and all of that, but a good way to connect with people around the country and make new friendships. So, yeah, yeah that was that's really exciting. Um, did you learn anything from your fights that you had obviously you went through the tournament and um was there anything in particular that um that you took away from the fights themselves yeah um i'm a pretty anxious person and so and then you know when you're fighting you're willingly walking into a fist fight so that puts those nerves a little bit more um up there and so i'd been working a really long time on how to control my nerves and how to just sort of let go during each fight and so when you're fighting um, the best of the best in the country, you know, like you have to learn to let those nerves go a little bit earlier so that you can be yourself in the ring. And so that's what I took away from it the most because I actually had a lot of fun. My first fight, I was a little more nervous than my second fight. But, you know, even in the moment, I could enjoy and appreciate like the awesome things my opponent was doing to me. <laughs> and so I think that's what I took away from it is you really just have to enjoy every minute in there because when you are fighting the best people you can, it's always kind of like a jockeying, right? Like one person's going to be better this time and then the other person's going to be better this time. And we all learn from each other and change the way we fight to fight each other better. And so um, that's the biggest thing I took away is you have to enjoy the moment because, you know, you never know if that moment's going to be yours or theirs. So it's good. Absolutely. And something I really appreciate, you mentioned this, um, and when I was doing my research, you talked a lot about this, is that you are very an op open and honest about how nervous and anxious you get before fights. I feel like a lot of people just try to suppress that and not say anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I really appreciate your honesty about how it really does feel to go into a fist fight. Um, yeah. Because I'm sure everybody feels it on some level. Yeah. Um, but um, I do think everyone feels it, it, but yeah. I think some people can like frame it differently. Does that make sense? Like, I think some people, I've met people who honestly frame it as I'm excited to get in there. Like their nerves, translate to excitement and mine do at some point but then also when I know these girls are really tough it's just like oh shit, they're gonna hit me with that and then oh man it's gonna be so hard you know so it's hard to like stop that spiraling out of control but yeah everyone feels anxious about fighting so I decided just not not talk about it you know because I think it's a very real part of the game that you have to control and manage so yeah that's very fair um <laughs> so what do you do you know to sort of help mitigate that or um you know you said sometimes that it translates into excitement um mm -hmm. what do you is there anything that you practice um mentally or anything to help you sort of calm yourself down and get you more focused and in the zone yeah um so i had done some therapy a long time ago and then um lately i've just been doing um like some meditation and focusing um and just trying to remember like, why are we doing this? You know, like none of us get paid. <laughs> or if you do get paid, you don't get paid very much. And so you have to remember why you're getting in there in the first place. Like, 
um, bottom line, like we can all quit whenever we want. And so I think remembering the fact that I, I love the challenge and I love the puzzle of trying to beat another person at the same game um, is really helpful. So I do a lot of meditation and then trying to come back to my like the focus of why I'm there and what I want to accomplish in that fight that has nothing to do with winning or losing because everybody wants to win. That's not, I mean, that's not a surprise. And so for me, that's what's helpful is like, what do I want to do this fight? What do I want to accomplish for myself? Not just winning, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Perfect sense. Yeah. Um, so then moving from the U S trials to the um, IFMA tournament, you won silver yeah. there um, yeah. and you looked good doing it and Thanks. you got to the gold medal match and faced Miriam El Mubarak, I believe yes. is how you say it. Yeah. Um, and you lost that fight, but, um, you know, I'm sure that was a great experience. Was that your first international competition? No, um, I fought at a WMO Moy Baran tournament in 2017 and 2018. And then I did the WACO World Championships in 2019 in Bosnia. And so um, I think the WACO and then this one, are, they're the bigger tournaments. And so there are a little bit more nerves going into that because everyone's earned their spot on that team from every country. You know, like all of us have won some sort of tournament or some sort of, you know, there's steps to get there. And so you really are facing the best of the best and that is nerve wracking, you know? And uh, all the girls in my bracket like have won the world championships before or been very close um, to winning. And so it is, it's awesome. Like I'm actually fans of most of the ladies in my bracket. <laughs> And so then to like stand across the ring from him was really fun. Um, nerve wracking on one hand, but really, really fun. So. Yeah. Was there anything that you learned there? I know a lot of people um, have mentioned that fought there, mentioned the scoring's a lot different than what they're used to. Um, was there anything, uh, did that affect you at all? Or was there anything else that you learned that is going to help you going into the world games? Um, I think so. I, I don't know that the scoring is different, but you have pads on, right? And so there are things that you're like, that doesn't hurt, you know? And so <laughs> when it doesn't hurt, but it's still scoring, the pads are there so you don't get cut or you don't get injured as you go through the tournament. And so sometimes it's hard to respect some of those things when they are scoring, but they don't hurt with pads on. So I think just keeping that in mind was really important. And then, um, so you have to kind of change your game just a little bit to take that into account. Like just cause it's not hurting you doesn't mean it's not scoring. And then just like, there's just little things. Like I don't always spar with headgear on and I don't always clinch with headgear on. And uh, a couple of the girls, they were really good about when they closed their clinch, they had my headgear caught. And I wasn't even mad at the time. I was like, oh, that's smart, <laughs> you know, but I haven't, but I don't do enough of those types of tournaments with headgear on or like someone hasn't really done that to me before. And so it was just, it was different. And so taking that into account, I started changing the way I was clinching and just changing a few game plan, things like that, to take that into account. Okay. Yeah. That, like I said, makes sense. Um, yeah. So then moving into the World Games 2022, um, you are in a, excuse me, you're in a weight class with a lot of people that um, were in the IFMA tournament. Yes. Miriam El Mubarak is going to be in that uh, weight class as well again. Yeah. Um, is there anybody, I'm sure that you want to get that fight back, um, <laughs> when you're the gold. um but is there any, is there anybody else that you're looking to face, um, in the tournament? Um, you know, uh, Monica Chashlikova, she's from Slovakia. She's the number one in kickboxing and Muay Thai. Um, so she's actually doing both tournaments and she's been number one for a while. I think she won the WACO tournament when I was there in Bosnia and then, um, I know she just won the world championships in 2019 for Muay Thai. So she would be really fun to face. face. She has fought everyone and anyone there is at our weight class around the world. So she'd be really fun. Um, and I've been like a fan of hers for a while. So I would be, it would be really great to face her. Um, I don't know a lot about like Austria and um, uh, there's a couple others, but you know, they're all going to be really good. They've all had to earn their place there. And so any one of those would be really great to face. I know that's like a totally lame answer, but I, I'm seriously fangirl on most of the girls in my bracket. No, that, so. that's perfect sense. Um, <laughs> Monica Chachlikova is, yeah, like you said, one of the best around. Yeah. Um, and I, I'd heard of her because I work for an MMA site and she 
has done stuff in Bellator and all of that. So, yes. um, yeah, that's really exciting. I'm excited to see her fight. Yeah. Um, and hopefully you get to face her. Hopefully yeah. you can prove yourself against her. Um, Great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then um, you mentioned training between the IFMA tournament and now you worked on some of the clinch and stuff. Yeah. Um, was there anything else that you've been working on to improve your game and do um, to help you be the best that you can be for the World Games between IFMA and uh, I guess now? You know, it's only been, uh, I think it was only like four weeks between the tournaments. And so, um, you know, a lot of the hard training, it's already done. So you just have to keep up your cardio, keep up all that stuff. Um, it really was just tweaking some of the clinch things and how to get um, just improving how I did against some of the taller fighters, uh, Miriam and then um, Gabriella from Poland. She, they're both really tall um, and I can't believe they're that tall in my weight bracket. <laughs> and so just kind of managing um, some of the length of their limbs and things like that, just a little bit better. Cause I also lost the first round against Poland um, just cause she used her length really well. And I was a little like, Oh God. Um, so just trying to work on that and then keeping my mindset where it needs to be. So I don't get, uh, stuck, you know? So. Yeah. That, yep. That's, that makes sense as well. Um, okay. So then really quick, let's do some rapid fire questions. Okay. One, what is your favorite color? Green. Green. All right. Um, two, what is your favorite book or movie? Oh, my favorite book right now, I would have to, I'm just going to go super nerdy on you. Uh, Brandon Sanderson, he writes a series called the Stormlight Archives. So I've been uh, kind of pouncing into that lately just to get my mind off of real world things. <laughs> so. No, that, yeah, that I've not heard of that, but um, it's really good. It what, what exactly <laughs> is that about? Um, it's kind of a, it's a fantasy novel. So he creates like this whole world and like a whole magic system. Um, but his characters have a lot of depth. And so it's really fun. Yeah. I, that sounds like something that I'd enjoy. So I'm going to look that up. Um, okay. And then, um, if somebody were to do a biopic about you or something like that, <laughs> um, who would you have to play you? Oh God. I don't even know. That's terrible. I don't watch. I don't watch a lot of movies and stuff, um, just because I don't have time. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> so I don't even know. <laughs> I can't even answer that one honestly. So. Okay. Sorry. That's fine. Um, okay. So then you also, I know, do Brazilian jiu-jitsu and yes. all of that. Um, what um, sort of? I'm sure that all of that has taken a back burner while you've been training for uh, these World Games, but a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I do keep uh, up with it, though, um, because the, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu actually helps in the clinch a lot and also um, also helps kind of manage some of the panic when you're getting smushed. And so I do keep up with that, and a lot of my Jiu-Jitsu guys know the clinch, so they try to throw me and do all kinds of crazy things. Um, so I do still do that a couple times a week, so I don't. It also takes me out of fight mode and gets me to do com something completely different two days a week, so... While still staying active. Yeah, yes. that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. And then who are, you've already mentioned a couple of fighters, but who are some fighters that you look up to in the sport um, that you are um, not necessarily trying to emulate your game after, but somebody that you really enjoy seeing? Um, in Muay Thai, I always love watching Sanchai, but who doesn't, right? He's got flair. He's got technique. Um and he's a lot of times he's like a shorter, smaller ish fighter. So I love watching his finesse because, I mean, if any of us could be that smooth in the ring, isn't that what we would all love? <laughs> um, but I also really like, um, I don't even know how to say his name. I'm going to butcher it. Onion Topic. Um, Topic. He's, he's a U.S. fighter. He, I think he's out of New Jersey, but he's in Thailand now. He's super technical. And I just I love all of the stuff he puts out. And he's worked really hard to, uh, as an older fighter, <laughs> older, um, you know, he's taken kind of a long journey to earn some belts and some titles and some accolade that he's really deserved for a long time. And so I like watching him as well. Yeah, that uh, you, you were mentioning older fighters. You're <laughs> turning 40 next month, correct? Yeah. <laughs> so how, how do you feel under about the that? Obviously. <laughs> You know, you feel like age is a number and all of that, but how do, do. you feel with that birthday coming up? Uh, I mean, I actually feel, I feel good. I mean, I'm 
now that being said, I do feel a little old this week, but I also have had like so many tournaments this year. It's been a little rough, but I, I don't know that that's old. I just feel tired. Um, but you know, I feel fine. And so I always think that those, um, I always wonder where those age limits come from because I don't think that they make sense. You know, as long as you're beating people in your bracket and you're passing a medical, who cares how old you are. But, uh, you know, I mean, I think it's hard not to like reevaluate and say, like, do I feel old? Because you are hitting 40 <laughs> in a couple weeks. <laughs> so. no, that's fair. Um, okay. So I meant to ask you this earlier, but um, A, who on you, the US team, who are some of your US teammates that you're looking forward to seeing? Um, so I'm actually really looking forward to most of the people I saw, I was with in Abu Dhabi, but because I didn't know many of them before that, you know, we don't get to spend a lot of time together because we're all so spread out around the United States. So um, like Ashley Feiner is always really fun to be around. She's always got a good attitude. Um, so she's really fun. But even like um, like Aaron Ortiz, Tierra Brand, everyone that was there, they, everyone is super supportive and nice. We're all working towards the same goal. We all have kind of the same struggles of like training and working and trying to make all this stuff work. And so I imagine the other people that I just don't know as well are going to be just as great. Um, it's just those are the people I know because I spent 10 days in a foreign country with them, you know? <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. I know Ashley talked a lot about how y'all connected really well. Uh, yeah. So, and she's really excited to see you. So, um, yeah, she's great. Yeah. That's, um, <laughs> that's really exciting. Um, and then, um, is there anybody in the tournament that you're looking forward to, not necessarily in your bracket or anything, but somebody that you're looking forward to watching as a spectator watching fight? Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to watching. I mean, I know everyone is, um, like, Tierra Brand's kind of up and coming, so she's always, like, everyone's always talking about her. But she really is, like, a hard worker. She's down to earth, and then um, she has a really hard bracket. And I really am excited to watch her work in there, you know, because I think she's going to, I think she's going to do great, um, but it's going to be really exciting to watch her go. Um, there's Pat Patricia Axling, I think that's how you say her last name, from Sweden. And then I think Iman Barlow is in her bracket. So it's going to be really fun to see how she um, does against them because I think she's going to do great. But it'll be uh, kind of a step up in competition for her just because she's so young, you know. Um, yeah, 20 years old. Yeah, she's, yeah. <laughs> she's young. She won gold at IFMA, and, but yeah, she's got a tough bracket facing Patricia Axling, Iman Barlow, and um, even a couple more fighters that are really tough as well. But, uh, but like it's said, still... that's, what, that's who everybody's looking forward to seeing. They're looking forward yeah. to seeing her. So I'm um, pretty, I'm looking forward to seeing Aaron Ortiz too, because he's pretty, is he pretty young too? 23, I, don't know. I believe. Okay, yeah. so he's pretty young. Um, but he did so well in um, Abu Dhabi as well. And he, for being someone as young as he is, like um, my coach and I were watching him. And he, for someone as young as he is, he has a really high fight IQ. And so that's super fun to watch. You know, as someone who like struggles with my anxiety, like that doesn't always show up. My Like sometimes I look like a dumbass in there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm doing stupid stuff. But he is just... I mean, his fight IQ is really high, so I'm really looking forward to his bracket as well. And I think he's big for his bracket, which is going to be fun to watch. So. Yeah, he did. He does look like he's pretty big for that bracket. That, yeah. yeah, I think he said he cut down for this one because they don't have his normal bracket. I might be misspeak, misspeaking, but I think he said he has to cut down for this one. Are you doing any cutting or anything for this? No. No, I'm kind of an in-betweener. I actually like, if I have a day before weigh-ins, I actually like to fight at 110. Um, but when it's a tournament, I mean, I like to eat, <laughs> so <That's... laughs> I ain't about that. I ain't about the hungry life. So That's no, perfect. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah, that I, when I competed in, I, I wrestled in high school, I, mm -hmm. I was a heavyweight, so I didn't have to worry about that. So I, I could not imagine doing any weight cutting or anything like that. No, uh, I mean, mostly it's just going to be water cutting because you have to stay hydrated all three days. So you are going to have to cut some, right? Because you can't cut your water out like you would for a, like a one day fight. Um, so there'll be a little bit of that. But um, no, I don't cut too much. I cut out my sweets, my drinks. <laughs> and you'll sweat out a lot of that water weight over here in Birmingham, you know, with the humidity and everything. I hope so, but it's not, the weather doesn't look that different than Iowa. Um, it's been about a 90 to 100 degrees and humid here as well. So, you know, it's been a perfect prep. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure it has. Um, yeah. Man, Iowa, um, 
what is living in Iowa like? I feel like everybody, <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody considers Iowa like the middle of nowhere, but I'm sure well, there's plenty. Yeah. It kind of is. No, <laughs> it's the middle of nowhere. Uh, but it's actually really nice. You know, when I, I grew up here and then I moved away for 10 years. And so um, when I was growing up, Des Moines was not that much fun. There was a lot. Of, it was like Des Moines and then like a bunch of small towns. I grew up in a small town. Um, but when we moved back, um, Des Moines is actually really nice. We have like good food. Um, I live downtown and there's been festivals every weekend, basically. Um, so there's like a music festival this weekend. Um, yeah, there's breweries and there's bike trails for hundreds of miles. So it's actually really nice here, uh, but it is small town. So, <laughs> but it's nice. Yeah. That's kind of how Birmingham is when I was, is when I was growing up. Um, yeah, there was not much going on, but then, you know, these days it's hosting the world games and it's, yeah. you know, got a lot of nice new things. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited and really proud of our city for the progress that it's made over the past like 15 years or so. Um, yeah, that's how I feel about Des Moines too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so before I let you go, um, I'm going to give you the floor. How can people follow you on Instagram? I believe it's Mongoose Ange. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, where did you get the nick? I'm sure that's a, that's your nickname. Where did you get the yeah. Mongoose nickname from? Uh, my husband and my brother, uh, we were, I don't even remember what was happening. We were all joking around one day and I'm small and I'm kind of mean and I'm kind of fast. So that's how that came from. There you go. Uh, so that's how you can, people can follow you on Instagram. Correct. Yes. Is there any other social medias that people can follow you on? Um, I just do Facebook and Instagram. I don't do any other social media stuff just cause I have a job and I run a business too. So, um, those are the only two I do. Social media is very time consuming. Oh uh, my God. So yeah. It's yeah. So <laughs> it, it's, yeah. Um, so then um, I'll also give you the floor to shout out any of your coaches, sponsors, um, anything like that before I let you go. Okay. Um, so my, well, my business is basically sponsoring me. So no coast Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And then I train at Round Kick Gym in Des Moines and Pete Peterson runs that. Um, he also runs the TBA Classic Tournament here in Iowa every year. And then I also train at the Striking Institute in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And Ryan Murray is my head coach there. So thanks Fantastic. for everyone there. <laughs> All right. Well, we look forward to having you here in Birmingham um, and we look forward to seeing you compete and um, best of luck in your competition. I hope you have a safe flight over here um, and yeah, looking forward to seeing you. All right. Thanks so much. No problem. Take care. All right. yeah.